Okay, welcome to this video. In this video, we're going to talk about a tug of war question. That's going to be able to deal with two people pulling on a massless rope, and they're going to be pulling each other towards each other, and they're going to have different masses. So they're going to be on uh, a sheet of ice with a frictionless rope, and they're going to move a certain distance until they meet. They're going to keep pulling on the rope. Uh, they each continuously pull themselves, and they start with a separation of 12 meters. So we want to know where do they meet up. Okay. So first of all, these can, these two boxes can represent our two people here. So this is the mass of the first person. This is the mass of the second person. The mass of the second person is twice the first person. So intuitively, we know right away that the larger person is going to pull the smaller person closer to them on the ice. In other words, they're not going to meet halfway. They're going to meet closer to this side, right? And so I'm going to call that person number one. I'm going to call this person number two. And they're both going to pull on this rope. So what does that mean in terms of the force that they both experience? Well, they're both going to experience the same exact force, believe it or not. That little person is going to put the same force on the big person as the big person puts on the little person. Don't believe me? Well, you know something's different about it, right? But you, you might think to yourself, well, how can those forces be equal if the big person is pulling on the little one? Certainly, the big person pulls more. Uh, that's what you might be thinking, but that's not the case. What is different about these is the acceleration. The smaller one's going to have a much larger acceleration because there's just less mass to pull it. Okay, so if I looked at the acceleration of the first person, it's just going to be force per unit mass, like this. The acceleration of the second person, which I'll write right here, is simply going to be force uh, over two times the mass, let's just say. Okay. So clearly this one has a slower acceleration because there's twice the mass. This is just Newton's second law. F equals ma, right? F equals ma. I just solve for acceleration. Because acceleration and force are almost the same thing, right? They just differ by the mass. Okay. But what gives it the acceleration its direction? What gives it the direction is the force. It's definitely not the mass. Mass does not give something a direction. So what's going to happen is these two objects are going to come closer together. Okay, so we're going to deal with some kinematics here. And they're going to meet somewhere, so we don't know where they're going to meet. They're going to meet in some final position here. Okay, wherever that is, okay, they're going to meet right here. And I'm going to start measuring my zero point from this first one right here. That's my zero point right there. So if I made a ruler down here, this is the zero point. This is the starting point, zero meters. And I move all the way along here until I get to 12 meters. They're starting at two different places on the ruler. Okay, this is the position. This is not the distance. This is not the displacement. This is just where they are starting. That's called the position. Okay, they're going to move, and they're definitely not going to move the same distance because the the big one's going to pull the little one closer to it. So if the wherever the halfway is, it's going to be to the right. But let's prove this uh, quantitatively here. Okay. So I'm going to start out with a basic kinematics equation, which says the final position equals the initial position plus v0t plus 1 half at squared to describe the motion of the single mass person, or mass m. And the reason is that this person is moving to the right. Okay, So this final position here is going to be, uh, it's going to start out with a position of 0. It's going to have no initial speed here, so that's 0, plus 1 half times the acceleration, which is just going to be force per unit mass over t squared. Okay, That's my first governing equation. So I'm going to write it down here again. x equals 1 half force per unit mass t squared. That's my first governing equation for the green box. Okay, That's the green box. Now let's take a look at the yellow box. I'm going to have a similar equation. I'm going to have final position equals initial position. Uh, in this case, I'm going to have that is, so V0T. Okay. In this case, minus 1 half AT squared because we know it's going to be accelerating to the left. Okay. So X final, the final position, is going to equal the initial position. In this case, is 12 plus V0T, which is just 0 minus one half times force over two m in this case, okay? T squared. Now I'm gonna just rewrite this governing equation here, down here like this. X equals twelve minus 
okay, one half, and I'm going to leave this written like this, force over 2m times t squared. Now I'm not going to combine that for a reason, because if we look over here on this equation, I can combine this over, so I'm going to rewrite it just a little bit, I'm going to put that one half inside, just so you can see it's the same thing. I'm going to write f over 2m like this. It's, I just put the one half on the inside. There's a reason I did that. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to substitute in this position here for f over 2mt squared into this one. Why can I do this? Well, they share the force. You see that? They have the same force, right? They share this m, even though this is twice of it, this variable m is the same for these. And they also share the time right here. Everybody see that? The time is the same. And they're also going to share the final position. Okay? So we'll get to that in a minute. We're going to actually substitute in to create another x here on this equation. But I'm going to take this whole term here. Okay? That term equals x, right? And I'm going to substitute it over here into this term right here. Okay? So right there, that's going to become an x. You see that? That's x. x is f over 2mt squared. You see that? Okay. So I'm going to come down here and I'm going to say uh, equation number one. I'm going to substitute that into equation number two. Right? When we get that, we're going to end up with an equation that looks like this. Final position, this is from two here. I'm just rewriting this one. Right? Minus one half. And in this case, this whole term just becomes x. See that, that, that position? Then I'm going to move this over to this side, and I'm going to end up with 3 halves x equals 12. x is going to equal 12 times, I'm going to flip this over when we multiply by the reciprocal, 2 thirds. So the final position is going to be 8 meters. That's the final position. Does that describe how far each person went? Not necessarily. Let's take a look. We know that they're not going to meet in the middle. This was 12 across here, right? So they actually met at 8 meters right here. That's the final position. So how far did each person travel? What was the distance here? Let's just look at distance in terms of positive values. The distance of the first person was clearly 8 meters, right? That person went here. The distance of the second person was 4 meters, right? because they started here and they ended up right here. So now you can see the difference between position and distance. There's a difference, right? The position is just the ruler, right? This is our imaginary ruler. And this is why sometimes I like to use this kinematics equation in the form of position. Sometimes we use it as displacement like delta x, but I like it in these types of situations where two objects intercept and when I say intercept, I mean where they meet. I always like to write these in terms of position because we can find the final position. And in this case, it was just 8 meters. Okay, so just to recap again, I had two masses pulling on each other with a tug of war. One of them is mass m, one of them is mass 2m. They're going to pull on each other. Okay, now Newton's third law says that the forces are equal and opposite. Newton's second law says that the acceleration is the function divided by the mass. Okay, In this case, the smaller one has a higher acceleration than the larger one. They're going to start moving towards each other. They're going to meet at some point, not necessarily in the middle, Okay, because this mass is bigger. I can write these kinematics equations out as a function of position. Uh, the position here of 1 and the position here of 2, the final positions are going to be the same. Right? We know that those are going to be the same. And uh, I can solve for x in terms of force, mass, and time. Substitute it into this one. Solve it after I plug equation 1 into equation 2. Okay, So x minus, uh, equals 12 minus 1 half x. That equals 3 halves x equals 12. x equals 8 meters. Okay, And once again, that represents the final position of these two objects or people when they meet in the middle of the tug of war. Alright, that's all I've got for this video. Thanks for watching and I'll talk to you soon.